Our invitation to worship is, though we have considered all the facts with joyful hearts, let us worship God. Then we'll now join us in the invocation. House of prayer since the days of minors. Home to all who come. Welcome to this gathering place. Friends, Friends and strangers, saint and sinner, all who gather here. Come with hope or hesitation. Come with joy or yearning. All who younger, all who thirst for life in all of its fullness. Generous God, let us know your spirit. Please remain standing and join in the hymn 115, the group hymnal. Come Christians, join to sing.
don't know about you, but I think secretly that's everyone's favorite part of the service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, our announcements today, I wanted to begin by uh, calling your attention to the white and green cards in the pews. The green cards are for any prayer requests, and put those in the offering plate, and we will um, include them at our prayer time, or if you'd like it just to remain uh, for the prayer group, uh, indicate that. If you are visitors today, or you have a new address or anything, please fill out this card. We'd love to be in touch with you, although not obnoxiously. So uh, please do that. We had a great time. Thanks, Finn. Oh, are you going to give us your new address, Finn? <laughs> um, I hope everyone had a great time at the picnic uh, last Sunday. Who could attend? I uh, wanted to thank our burger flippers, Jeff and Mark and Jim, for the really, really nice music, as well as Calvary Chapel um, saying some beautiful music. Uh, God rained on us, but not on our parade. The only thing we didn't have was the kids' games. But we'll do that at, at another time. So thank you, everyone who helped um, with that. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, on the back of your uh, bulletin and in the back, we are doing Rise Against Hunger again, which I'm very excited about that it's going to be happening while Jeff and I are still in town. If you recall, this is a, a meal packaging program that we've done, I think, five years in the past, but we had to skip it a couple years because of the pandemic. So. We um, are working with Teens Incorporated, that's where it's going to be held, and uh, we got a grant from the Lions Club. We still need more sponsors so that we can continue to do it next year, so if you know a business or someone with deep pockets that wants to help, <coughs> please let Paula Gip know her information is there. So we'd love to have a great team from our church. If there's other organizations you belong to that would like to um, start a team or, or form a team, or if you have a place to post this, they're in the back. Um, also, uh, several people in our congregation, I came upon a family in distress this week. Um, their car broke down in Big Springs. They have a six-month-old and a, a 19-month-old. Uh, they don't have a place to live. And uh, the church put them up for three or four nights at the Sundance Lodge. The um, like social services was going to pay for another week, but they didn't have another week to let them stay there. So we scrambled yesterday, found them a place to camp out at um, Kelly Dahl. So um, I don't know if you all know Ressa Smith. She's been very involved in helping them also. So right now, they're there. There's four of them and a giant dog in, a, in our tiny tent. So if anyone has a... Um, like a four-wheel vehicle that can go down to Garden Gulch, maybe Mark does. They have another tent there. Mark, did you want to say something or just say you got I have to talk to Josh about it. We'll go after Okay, it. good, because they've got stuff down there, but they said, don't take our car because it would wreck the car. <laughs> so um, if we can get them another tent, I think they'll... And he does have a job, and they're looking for... They can afford rent. They just can't find a place that's open that will take a dog and a family. So... Um, if you have any ideas, please pass them along to us. Um, also, um, we have special music today by Ben Thomason. He's going to play his violin for us. I've been waiting all summer for this. And sadly, this is their last uh, Sunday with us because they are moving to Fort Collins for schooling for, um, what, for their children. So we uh, want to wish, wish Ben and Aaron and Finn and Jubilee all the best. And they promise to come back and periodically visit, especially the picnic, Finn. I heard your mom promised next picnic you get to come back, okay? <laughs> okay, are there any other announcements? Okay, um, so let us stand and join in singing All Beautiful, The March of Days on page 292 in the Blue
Um, for those I haven't met, my name is Margie Dan Sura. I'm, I'm not the preacher. I'm not a preacher at all. <laughs> I was just asked by um, our pastor, our new pastor, Zach, to um, read um, an opinion piece from the New York Times today. And um, we're going to have two guest uh, preachers for the next two weeks. They will be preachers, as I understand. And then Zach will be back. The reason he's gone for three weeks is that before we called him to this position, he had family plans. You know how you plan your summer ahead? Well, he had family plans that, um, you know, that he had already committed to with his family. So he, he will be back. Our, he, our scripture um, is from, from Psalms. I'm sorry. The gospel reading today is from Matthew 6, 5 through 6. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. <clears throat> Excuse me. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secrets will reward you. <coughs> What I'll be reading today is entitled, I Don't Want to See a High School Football Coach Praying at the 50-Yard Line. This is not a news article. Uh, this is an opinion piece uh, that is a guest opinion piece in the New York Times, and it was written by Anne Lamott, and she's the author of 19 books, including Dusk, Night, Dawn, Bird by Bird, and Some Assembly Required. That's about raising children. <laughs> um, she describes herself as a recovering alcoholic and, and drug addict who is liberal in her beliefs and is also a born-again Christian. So she's a very complex person. These are her words, and this was first printed in the New York Times on July 8th of this year, and most opinion pages have um, opposing views so that you can be informed and form your own opinion. Many of us who believe in a reality beyond the visible realms, who believe in a soul that survives death, and who are hoping for seats in heaven near the dessert table, also recoil from the image of a high school football coach praying at the 50-yard line. This is a reference to the Supreme Court decision recently, if you weren't informed of that. It offends me to see sanctimonious public prayer in any circumstances, but a coach holding his players hostage while an audience watches his piety makes my skin crawl. We are fighting furiously for women's rights and the planet, and we mean business. We believers march, rally, and agitate, putting feet to our prayers. And in our private lives, we pray. Is it praying a bit Teletubbies as we space off with the urgent darkness? Nah. Prayer means talking to God or to the greatest universal spirit, a.k.a. Gus or not me. Prayer connects us umbilically to a spirit both outside and within us who hears and answers. Is, is it like the comedian Flip Wilson saying, I'm going to pray now. Anyone want anything? <laughs> Anybody remember Flip Wilson? I some people might be too young. <laughs> she says, kind of. But I do not understand much about string theory, but I do know we are vibrations all the time. Between the tiny strings is space in which change can happen. The strings are infinitesimal. The, spirit, the space between nearly limitless. Prayers say to that space, I am tiny, helpless, needy, worried, but there's nothing I can do except send my love into that which is so much bigger than me. How do people like me believe entirely in science and reason and also believe that prayer can heal and restore? Well, I've seen it happen a thousand times in my own inconsequential life. God seems like a total show-off to me, if perhaps unnecessarily cryptic. When I pray for all the places where we see Christ crucified, Ukraine, India, the refugee camps, I see in my heart and in the newspaper that goodness draws near through UNICEF, Doctors Without Borders, volunteers, through Motley Old Us. I wake up praying. I say a prayer some sober people told me to pray 36 years ago. Because when all else fails, follow directions. It helps me to not fixate on who I am, but on whose. I am God's adorable, aging, self-centered, spaced out beloved. One man in early sobriety told me that he had come into recovery as a hotshot, 
but that other sober men helped him work his way up to servant. I pray to be a good servant because I've learned that this is the path of happiness. I pray for my family and all my sick friends that they have days of grace and healing. And I end my prayers, make me ever mindful of the needs of the poor. Then I put on my glasses, let the dog out to pee and start my day. I will have horrible thoughts about others, typically the Christian right on the, or the Supreme Court or someone who has seriously crossed me, whose hair I pray falls out or who books, whose book fails. I say to God as I do every Sunday in confession, look, I, can, I think we can both see what we have on our hands here. Help me not to be such a pill. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that a lot of times. It is miserable to be a hater. I pray to be more like Jesus with his crazy compassion and reckless love. Some days feel better than others. I pray to remember that God loves Marjorie Taylor Greene exactly the same as God loves my grandson. Because God loves, period. Because God does not have an app for not love. God sees beyond each person's awfulness to each person's needs. God loves them as is. God is better at this than I am. I lift up one of my grown Sunday school kids who is in the ICU with anorexia. I beseech God to intervene, as she does through finding my girl a great nurse later that day. Nurses, she believes, are God's answers 35% of the time. My prayer says to whoever might be listening, I care about her and have no idea what to do but to hold her in my heart and turn her over to something that might do better than me. And I hear what to do next. Make her one of my world-famous care packages. Overpriced socks, a journal, needless to say, communion elements tailored to her, which might be almonds and sugar-free gum. It's love inside wrapping paper. Especially when I travel, I talk to so many people who are absolutely undone by all the miseries of the world. And I can't do anything for them but listen, commiserate, and offer to pray. I can't turn politics around, or war, or the climate, but in listening, by opening my heart to someone in trouble, I create with them more love, less of a grippy clench in our little corner of the universe. When I get on stage for a talk or an interview, remember she's an author, I pray to say words that will help the people in the audience who feel most defeated. When I got to interview Hillary Clinton in Seattle a few years ago, we prayed this prayer together, huddled in a corner backstage, to bring hope to the hopeless. Do I honestly think these kind of prayers were heard and helpful? Definitely. On good days, I feel slightly more neutral towards Jenny Thomas and the high school coach praying after games. I pray the great prayer of thanks all day for my glorious, messy family, husband, and life, for my faith, my sobriety, for nature, for the, all that is still here and still works after so much has been taken from us. When I am at my most rattled or in victimized self-righteousness, I go for walks, another way to put my feet to prayer. We're lucky that we live somewhere where we can take wonderful walks. I pray for help, and in some dimension outside of my mind or language, I relax. I can breathe again. I say thank you. I say thank you for the same flowers and trees and ferns and cactuses that I pass every day. I say thank you, thank you, thank you. A walk is a great prayer. To make eye contact and smile is a kind of prayer, and it changes you. Fields and woods are the kingdom. You don't say, oh, there's a dark-eyed jungle flitting around that same old pine tree, whatever. Or look at those purple wildflowers. I've seen those a dozen times. You are silent. There be, may be no one around you, and the forest will speak to you in the way it will speak to an animal. And that changes you. At bedtime, I pray again for my sick friends and refugees. I beg for sleep. I give thanks for the blessings of the day. I rest into the vision of the pearly moon outside my window that looks like a porthole into a bigger reality. I sigh and close my tired eyes. I have the theological understanding of a bright eight-year-old, but Jesus said we need to approach life like children, not like cranky know-it-alls, crazily busy, touching our to-do lists. One of my daily prayers is, slow me down, girlfriend. 
The prayer changes me. It breaks the toxic trance. Trance. God says to Moses the first time. God said to Moses the first time they meet, "Take off your shoes. Be on the earth. Breathe with me for a moment." Um, my comment on this is that I I often see. I know in college and um, in West Palm Beach where we live in the winter, there would be people on street corners praying or entreating you to faith literally with a loud, you know, a megaphone. And I was always afraid, although I probably agreed with what they were saying, that it might turn people off. And so I've always been attracted to people of faith who um, express their faith through working and volunteering and helping others and praying together. There's nothing wrong with prayer. <laughs> I don't think she's saying that there is. But um, so I agree with this in that sense that um, praying uh, quietly and showing your faith through work and volunteering uh, probably attracts more people to Christ, which is what we're supposed to be all about. So, as they say, all people said, Amen. 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 Okay, please join, stand and join in the singing of the hymn 368 in the Blue Hymnal. I've got peace like a river.
O oh God, inspired by grace, with the spirit of gratitude, we give a measure of our treasures. And through this giving, may this community be a vibrant expression of grace in and for the community of Netherland and all the world. Amen. Amen. couple of years. Uh, it took a pandemic to bring them to our church here at Netherland, uh, but we're super happy that they were part of our church family, and uh, we wish them prayers of good travel and and uh, joys of, uh, of success going forward. So thank you for being part of our church. Are there others? I'd like to pray for um, the folks who are with us today that we haven't seen for a while. But so important to me. Let's pray. However you want to pray. Hands up, hands down, golden. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all together again this week. Um, please help Ruby and Alicia and her family through this difficult time. Please help us find housing for Derek and Destiny and their beautiful children. Thank you for the time that the Thomason family has had with us, and please bring them back into our fold. They'll never leave our church anymore. We pray for all of those who are suffering with disease and distress. We pray for those who are protecting our country and other countries from those who would hurt them and threaten freedom. We pray for more rain, which has really helped this summer with our wildfire problem. And we pray for understanding between those who are at odds with each other. At this time, let us join in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, who art in your name, name your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your, your will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. And do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and sing Blue Skies, which is the insert in your
As we part from this place, let us all go in peace to help others and spread your word. Amen. Amen.